Welcome to uh, Advocacy. We are in the uh, same studio space this time too. Look yeah. at this craziness! It we've matured. We're like grown up, grown up. <laughs> Ryan, look, dude, we got green screen. I'm gonna wear a green shirt that color. I need another Pantone color just so I can wear it one day. Oh, we can do that. We'll make that happen for you. That'd be a nice little banner. So this is um, episode season two, episode three, and it's, I'm Ryan. Oh, I'm Tristan. By the yeah. way, thank you. Yeah. Um. It's our Christmas episode. This is, uh, we're a couple days out, right? Yep. We're so, Christmas Adam. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. Then you have Christmas Day. Oh, I get it. <laughs> wow. That's, that's real good. That's, wow. That was cheesy. That was a good no, dad joke. Good dad no, 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 joke. There you go. Christmas Adam. We should have ribs tonight. Oh, from. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> good. Wow. Okay. You can't full, stop it, can we? Full, uh, the train is running right now. It's left the station. It's what we do, I guess. <laughs> so we, you sent me this TikTok about how Winnie Cooper was not all that. No. This dude was upset and pissed off, and he was talking about how Winnie was, she was a spoiled brat. I'm going to say it the nice way, yeah. right? Spoiled brat. Um, he called her a cold-hearted something yeah, else. Yeah, bad yeah. words. Yeah. Lots of bad words. We don't. We, I, once he said that, I like went back and actually watched some clips of the Wonder Years, and I'm like, because there was like a YouTube that I had found that was like Winnie Cooper being a, a B word. Yeah, and she was okay. She kind of was. Let Let's be real though, and, and let's be honest. Did you grow up with a neighborhood girlfriend? I grew up. There were girls in my neighborhood growing up. Did you ever date them? No. Okay. As a kid living in a cul-de-sac type area. And high in elementary school, like your dating poles who lived who you live near. That's really how it worked, right? Media proximity, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Winnie was every boy's crush. We're gonna be honest, right? Till Topanga Lawrence into the picture. I'm still gonna say it. Well, well, we'll get there. Okay. I'm not quite I don't know how to feel about that. Yes and no. But Winnie was every boy's crush. <laughs> Kevin grew up with her, right? They weren't automatically boyfriend and girlfriend. Kevin also went off and dated a bunch of other girls. Let's be real. Right. True. When you did her own thing, it was, it was a growing experience. And that's why she had kind of her full cycle of stuff. There's a point where your friends stopping your friends for a little bit. And then you come back to each other. You know what I mean? Sure. So I think for what, for what Winnie was, she was exactly right. I mean, that's everybody who's grown up that way kind of went through that whole cycle. You know, you, you've got a girl, she was young. She's just the girl next door, <coughs> whatever. I don't think things changed too now that like, this is you got to remember, like obviously the show written before social media. Yep. But obviously set during the late sixties, early seventies, like Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So, dude, I mean, immediately her brother goes off to war. Yep. Immediately, that's obviously going to be taxing on her, right? Kevin's going through his weird. I mean, Kevin her went parents, through. Her yeah. Parents split up. She had a lot going on, dude. So uh, she's going to rebel. She's going to act out. She's going to be whiny and prissy and all of that stuff because every little girl is at that time frame i mean i i'm pretty sure it's pretty accurate right mm -hmm. as dudes looking back on it we go oh my gosh i can't believe she acted that way but we've got to step back and go yeah we'd probably act the same way anyway kevin i mean dude kevin went through like what four or five girls also this is true and kevin was super awkward yeah like so. big time <laughs> if you're a babe and the hot dude wants to date you you're probably gonna be like oh, i want to go to the hot dude I, that's reality right so Fair enough can we, can we hate on Winnie too much? Not really. Um, I mean, the hard part is that like the guy was comparing her to a Topanga type person. I don't think Topanga and Corey ever had a rough spot. Did they? Yeah. Oh yeah. Did, but it was, it was it, it was later in the show, but the, okay. the, yeah. Oh, but yeah, they always really got back cool. together. Yes. It was like ingrained in the show. That those two had to be together forever. Correct. Winnie Cooper and Kevin, not so much. It was literally growing. Spoiler alert. And them growing together. If you haven't seen the last episode. Well, if you haven't seen uh, Girl Meets World. Yeah. Well, no, spoiler about The Wonder Years, if you haven't seen the last episode. I believe, didn't Winnie break up with Kevin in the last episode? Honestly, I don't remember the last episode. Okay. It's pretty so sure long. she broke up with him in the last episode. It's been a really long time. I think that's why the guy went off on Winnie, because he's like, man, the, the man gave you everything all the way through, like, all the seasons, and then right at the very end, you're like, oh, it's just too much. Bye. But it, it makes sense. It was too intense. Like, I get it. I totally get it. Here's here's a fun one. So the most the most classic 80s TV show ever is Knight Rider. Sure. 
For the most part, right? For the most part. I mean, yeah. you talk about, hey, who, who's the, the car that drives itself? Everybody's like, oh, it's Kit, Knight Rider. Everybody knows that. Yep. I decided to watch Knight Rider 2008. That was where they had the uh, Ford Mustang. <sighs> they went away from the Trans Am. <sighs> oh, my gosh. The, the one reason I never watched it was because of the Mustang. If it's, it's not, not a Pontiac, it's not a freaking train. Isn't there it's, a girl in that one, too? There is a girl. So, okay. Now here's I the premise. I'm falling in. I, I thought I saw it back when it originally came Episode out. one. Dudes come in. They want this guy's um, his tech or whatever because it, it helps control all of the military satellite communications. You know, typical. Sure. Right? Come to find out the guy was the actual originator of the Knight 2000. Right, K I T T, yeah. Night Industries 2000, and he created original kit. Yeah, cool. He's created a brand new one out of this Ford Mustang Cobra, <laughs> which is cool, right? But it's not a Trans Am, which bugged me. Fast forward, they come after him. He pretends like he's dead. Blah blah blah. The girl is his daughter. She goes to find Mike Lance or whatever the hell his name is. Then you come to find out that Mike is actual Michael Knights. Son, okay. I would assume Hasselhoff has lots of them out there. It only, it only makes sense, right? Well, don't speak German. But I'm watching this thing. <laughs> yeah, they probably do. <laughs> There's no way around it. And they all like rap too. Yeah. They rap and sing. <laughs> wow. Um, they love Speedos. But <clears throat> like I'm watching it and it almost seems like the, like the green screen, all the effects are so cheesy and so fake looking. I'm just like, no wonder it didn't, it didn't go anywhere. Well, one season. Okay. And in the defense, I believe it became it came out on NBC, if I'm not not mistaken. Probably. I'm almost positive. If you remember that era in TV, like they shotgun blasted like everything out at one time. Well, yeah, but it's it's so like, yeah, of course they're cheesy because they're trying to do like 35 different new shows at one time. Yeah. I just I, I think it failed because the effects were awful. Like even the driving scenes, it was you could tell everything was green screen. It was everything was, hundred well, percent premise of like the, and they used a Mustang. And everybody that likes original Knight Rider is all about. They, they were Pontiac fans. That was a big piece. That's what mattered. Acting was awful. Um, and it was like they had weird little nanoparticles that like could change the shape of the car, often. So it went from like a black Mustang to a white Mustang to like pursuit Mustang with like two spoiler fins in the back to like, and I'm like, what in the, there's just, there was too much going on. If they want to redo it, they can call me. I'll help them out. We'll make it happen. But you have to redo the Fresh Prince Miller first. Oh, I think he's already doing that. And he didn't take my idea. Oh no. It was such a good idea. Oh, such a good idea. No. I know. I'm, I'm torn. I'm upset about that. There are also another spinoff. Team Knight Rider. I'm out. I, I'm I'm trying to watch these. I I, I want to rewatch classic shows. And I'm I, like, oh my gosh! It's like you're gonna start watching like the Love Boat, <laughs> but Love Boat 2000. And it's like, God, that'd be it's awful. Like tinder. That'd be awful. Just oh my tinder gosh. on a boat. That's really what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, but it's like it's pictures scourge, of cabins swipe left or right. The scourge of society. It's oh like on gosh, a boat. Dude. Like here you go. Yeah. Oof. So TV. How often as a child did you fall asleep watching TV? Uh, I mean, a fair amount, probably. As, as far as like being a kid yeah, goes, okay. yeah, makes sense. Pretty often. Did you at least night a week? Maybe. Did you magically wake up in your bedroom? Oh yeah. There was like some mystical portal as a child that like you fall asleep and you wake up in your room. Now, here's a weird part. I've slept naked my entire life forever. That's probably more than I've wanted to know about you, but yeah. I fell asleep <laughs> on the couch once and woke up naked in my room. What? All right. That's kind of weird. I don't know. No. Okay. But okay. Unless you like unknowingly just to get comfortable to get used to being in bed did it you like got naked yourself oh i i would assume well i don't know but i assume that's exactly what happened it'd be weird if it didn't i mean i remember like falling asleep in the car on road trips and i'd wake up in my bed see i would highly doubt that my parents would undress me that would be awkward and awful yeah but i'm pretty sure i just did it myself magically 
yeah, that's so. And your portal was was like long distance. Yeah, like you time travel. You're like, I'm gonna teleport from here to here. Like you just fall asleep in the car and put boom, new city. Just I'm awake now. <laughs> yeah, freaking weird. Well, it's like I remember because my parents owned a, a chain of bakeries, like yeah. cookie bakeries Gosh, across I still the West Coast. Cookies. And uh, and so we'd be going from like Boise to Portland or Portland to Seattle or Sacramento or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you'd fall asleep somewhere like outside of Ontario, Oregon, and I'd wake up in Portland. You're like, that just happened. Yeah. It's the blackout. I think, dude, the the road noise hum is probably oh, the most I love relaxing sound yep. ever. Yep. It's kind of weird. Like I coached and I can fall asleep like on the school bus within like 10 minutes. Oh, it's oh, great. It's just like instantly out. Yeah. I mean, plus it was just being so tired, like you got trained, but like, yeah, so many wrestling trips on the bus that like I, there was a way I could fall asleep. I'd always sit in the very front seat because there was always the divider that went to the stairwell. Mm-hmm. You could hear the engine, but there were, I would always put gear in the seat next to me so nobody would sit across the aisle. Okay. And then I could lay down across those two seats and I'd be out within like. Across the aisle? Oh, yeah. I'd be out within. The like, middle side you didn't have? What? didn't notice it because if you so- scoot far enough the way I laid, like if you scooted far enough up on the seat where my upper body was on, I w- my legs would be across the aisle so there mm-hmm. wouldn't be any sag. I did the head against the seat in front of me, you know, so you got the red mark. Yeah. But then like you were, I don't know. I've that's... done that too. Or like you try to do like the, the lean out, like the airplane lean out, or you try to like stuff yourself into the window, but you're traveling in winter and buses are poorly insulated. Dude, I think I'm that awkward kid that doesn't give a crap who you are next to me. I'm going to lay on you. <laughs> There's a few of those. Dude, like... I mean, if, if you're on a wrestling team, <laughs> like my boy, it doesn't matter anybody. If it's a friend of mine, I mean, if you're next to me, dude, and I'm, I'm ready to go, you're my, you're my pillow. I just turned you into that. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't matter. Like, I mean, you should be comfortable enough, right? Especially in a wrestling team. I would like spot kids. They'd be like laying underneath instead of in the aisle, though. They would lay and crawl down, crawl down, and they'd be like under four seats. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I mean, something happens. They're probably going to be all right. <laughs> like, I mean, if they break, they're just going to slide forward. Yeah. So I, it makes sense. I always like wanted to see that happen to it. Raise your feet. Okay. There's a heater like every 10 rows, so like I guess what? they'd probably hit one of those. There was only one heater in our bus at the very, very back, and that was it. Nothing else. Really? It was uh, freezing we're, we're kind of all the time. Yeah. yeah. That's really spoiled, actually. Maybe. I don't know. Hey, so speaking of classic movies, I watched Weird Science the other day. Okay. Kelly LeBrock. Oh, Lisa. <laughs> can we? Wait, I feel like we need to pause for a second so everybody can remember Lisa. Gosh. You really looking her up? Yeah. Really? It's it's fr- I mean it's fresh because I saw it the other day. I know, but for me it's like I gotta see this. Can I? Can you see this? I Kelly LeBrock. That. Just look at Weird Science, dude. There is no way you, you can't just look at Weird Science. She was just the accent and the her being free. I don't know about like the bad free though. Dude, you have something about eighties girls though too though. That's because it's it's when I grew up. Man. Okay, so she was also in Kingpin. Yeah, I think she was. You're right. I'm pretty sure she was. She was in Kingpin. I know for okay. a fact because I watched that not too long ago. Yes. But um classic movie. I mean, she taught Wyatt and what's his face how to drive. I always forget the other kid's name, the blonde kid. Right. But Chet was uh the guy from the older brother was the guy from um what's the horror game movie? The Twister. 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 Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton. And so I was like, I flipping love watching it because he plays such a good douchebag. <laughs> such a good douchebag. It's so funny. Oh my gosh. But yeah, classic movie. No, I just keep thinking of her now in Kingpin because she's one of my favorite characters. But yeah. I just keep thinking about her in that movie. <laughs> ah, that movie. Just love it. All right. So she taught him how to drive this old pink caddy, dude. Do you feel like parents don't teach their kids how to drive as well anymore? I think parents rely on driver's ed a ton more to teach their kids instead of taking the onus to actually do it. That makes sense. It's wintertime right now, right? How many cars have you seen with like freaking just the front window scraped and everything else just piled full of snow? (laughs) Just like a foot of snow on the roof. (laughs) Did (laughs) just mob it down the road like nothing's happening? Yeah, like seriously. Like you can't (laughs) see any other window at all. It drives me freaking. They didn't clear the hood. It's like they're driving around down around town, like snow's coming over the hood. I'm like, so I saw this girl the other day. Same scenario, only did a window, was driving around. Wipers couldn't handle the, the fury of snow flying off the front hood, right? <laughs> and so she's like trying to reach out and like do this. And I'm like, what the, f- 
You know what? What is wrong with people? Like, get out. There's a secret to doing that. You let your car warm up long enough. Yeah. You drive about 30 miles an hour, slam on your brakes, and all the snow. Goes oh, it's easy enough. Yeah. Right I mean, why, why not? Teach that technique, or I teach all my kids to like hood all the way back. Yep. Clear it. Clear it. Every window's got to be clear. Done. I do that for. That's how it should be. Yeah. I mean, like, you always want to clear the hood. You clear the roof because it affects your back window. You clear the back window because. And it's just courteous. You need to be able to see. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's courteous for the drivers behind you. Too. And you don't want the giant sheet of snow flying off the back and killing somebody behind you. It just drives me bonkers, dude. I actually had a claim that I handled two years ago. Oh. Um, somebody was driving down the road behind somebody on I-90 mm-hmm. and a frozen chunk of, like, six-inch chunk of frozen ice and snow had blown off of the car in front of them and hit their windshield and almost Holy took crap. the windshield out and, then, like, caused them to drive into the ditch. That's flipping... Yeah. No. It's insane. What? It was insane. I felt really terrible for him. Like, man, that must have been really hard. Dude, that's but... absolutely crazy. But yeah, for, driving in the snow and learning, that's, I mean, like, I had to do my driver's license test in the snow. Oh, that's, wow. So it was like okay. driving extra slow, but she was like, hey, good job. Uh, here's your, you know, license you passed. Way to pass. But it was that like, we couldn't have done a ton of the stuff that we would normally have done. Mm hmm. Because, like, there were snow berms, so, like, the parallel parking, we had to practice in a parking lot instead of, like, actually doing it on the side of a road because there was a snow berm where she wanted to do it. So she's like, well, we can't. Well, we'll pull in this parking lot, and you can practice parallel parking between Dude, like, totally these two lines, and it worked. Yeah, no, it totally works. It's awesome. So, but yeah. Okay. Pass. So, uh, yeah, but I feel, okay, so <clears throat> parents, parents, if you're listening or watching, teach your freaking kids how to clear everything off. It's required by law. Just do it. It is. It is actually against the law. Yep. Especially if you leave snow on your back window, you can get pulled over for it. Think about appropriate braking distances also. And pressure. Not just like, not just like hey, I'm going to give myself double the distance, but still press on the brakes like normal. Gentle, gentle. Yeah. Gentle. Smooth into the bad boy, okay? Especially when you're driving like an 11,000 pound, like, you know, suburban, you know, soccer mom jacked up on, you know, quad yeah. shot Americano or whatever. Dude, I was driving with my son in the, uh, in the blazer and he was driving and I was like, all right, make sure you're Break sooner than this. Yeah. A little too rough right now. And I'm like, if, if it's any kind of ice, you're just going to catch. It's a Especially big... in a heavy rig. It's, it's hard to come back because once you let off the brakes, you actually gain momentum. Mm-hmm. And you start, you roll faster. So it's like, then you pit again, you're going to slide even further. So, yeah, it's just, it's, I think it's one of those things that people need to talk about every year and constantly remind themselves because <coughs> every year it turns into an ice rink up here. And we have just so many people have accidents. You're like, I'm not blaming the Californians. I'm the not going to say that. Yeah. The last ditch <clears throat> thing you can try when you're in a slide. And I was actually taught this in a driving course when I was, I had to do a certification to drive the school vans because I was a yep. wrestling coach. She made me try it on a hill. If you're sliding, she had me put it in neutral. Wow. And so when it take, you take an automatic transmission out of gear, it takes the pressure off of the wheels from yep. going forward into just rolling. And so you can actually... If you're going to slide, it slides all four instead of the front two. Hmm. So the back doesn't push you around. And it actually works. It was like, it was really slowed down a lot faster. So if you're trying something you're in your neighborhood or whatever, and you want to practice, like, and you're in a slide, just like try to put yourself in a slide and then put it in neutral and you'll actually feel yourself slow down. Just keep the even brake pressure. Really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I always, anytime I start off, like anytime I see snow outside, before I pull out of my, or pull away, I floor it to see how much spin I have. And as I'm going, then I hit the brakes before I even leave to see how much slide I have to know what kind of traction I'm getting. So it's never stubborn too. I haven't even really put it in four wheel drive much lately. I uh, I did auto, but I mean I've been in two wheel drive almost the entire time. Yeah, people like freak out about like you got to be in four. I'm like, you're like no, I mean it's not going to make you stop just any don't better. Don't smash on your skinny pedal and you'll be all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, just... Yeah, it's pretty basic. Yeah. All right, man. So, I there's this box right here for you. Okay. From Justin. Okay. You're gonna do it. You You're gonna to do, do it. it. I want you to do it. I want to. It's a heavy. That's it, dude. It's it's, it's a, a load of stuff. It is. Oh boy. Ooh, there's news. It newbies in here. Some new stickers. There's some stickers, dude. I love it. Hawaiian print. That's sweet. It's a Hawaiian print. I have one like that back one of my truck. Too. Oh, that's really cool. Sweet coffee cup stickers. Yep. Or phone case stickers. Phone case for sure. You want to hold those for you here? No, I don't. Thank you. Look at that. My Sherpa exfoliator. We love Patriot. Natural soap exfoliator. It's a new one. Smell that. 
I love the box, Smell too. It. The bomb yeah. on it. Here, show it to the camera. I mean, we're on camera now, right? Oh, so there's, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, they can see totally. But yeah, there's beautiful a, exfoliator, Patriot soaps. Patriot soaps. I'll even read it to you. This soap is an extreme exfoliant packed with walnut shells, powdered pum- pumice, sea clay, poppy seeds, coffee, and oatmeal. Lightly scented with peppermint and lemongrass. Then you need to smell it. Oh. Oh, baby. No, open it up. Open it. Smell it, dude. Yeah, you got. You have to open it and smell it. Now, I want you to read what's on the inside of that box. Fight like you're the third monkey trying to get on Noah's Ark. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Which is why we love Justin. We 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 love Patriot. Doesn't that smell bomb? Like that I can smell awesome. here. That smells awesome. That is fantastic. The lemon and the mintiness and the oh my freaking lord. Seventeen seventy six. So okay, and you know you like one that of one my all time favorites. Okay, so you got two bars of that, right? Oh, this is so good. So okay. good. Hipster repellent. Well, look look at the top first. Okay. Keep going over. Foo bar. Have you smelled foo bar? I don't think I have. Had I, that's the a pretty, that's a brand new flavor, dude. It's like Christmas in here. It's totally awesome. When all, well, what do you got? Pardon for the for, for, pardon my French on this. When all shit breaks loose, you find yourself in a screwy situation. This scent will keep you performing. A strong masculine scent. Oh, it makes you perform. Be the person that I'm totally going to use that later. Of the devil says, "Oh shit, they're up." Love Did it. you notice that there was that on all of them? Ooh, I like that one. It's good, right? I like that one a lot. You're coming to my favorite ones. The, this newest scent is the one Angry my, my Charlie favorite. is my favorite. Angry Charlie bomb. I think we've got um oh it's, it's right there. Hose dragger. Hose dragger. That is my new favorite. Hands down. I love it. Hose dragger. Scent for courage under fire. Literally. Special scent for all our firefighter brothers. Smell this. It's just just put it in your nose. Just put it in your nose. It smells kind of like a men's cologne a little bit. Tell me that's not pleasant. I want to live in here. That's is so I good. That's so box. good. Oh yeah, Justin upped his game. He uh, he, he liked up with a couple new things. That is delightful. Dirty hands, it. clean money. I love that one. Bad decisions, fantastic. Hipster repellent. I love, dude. Dude, he went to like and hit the Hall of Fame of scents in those ones. Primo box, primo box. That is awesome. I even bought today. I bought two bars of Sheepdog. Oh, so spoiler alert for my brother-in-law who's getting a stocking <laughs> stuffer from me, but. Um, and hey, we've got listeners. If you guys listen, um, shout us out. Let us know. Pass us around a little bit. Um, like that button. Follow us. All the fun stuff. You know, we like to hook up people with soaps. Uh, we really enjoy it. Got those stickers. I'll throw back in here. Oh that yeah, that's awesome. Bad, Justin, thank you. You're the man. Those are totally awesome. That is a, a winner in my household for sure. You know what is? You know what's cool about the, like his product? Kid loves the soap too. Dude, so I have I like the best smelling five year old on the planet. Yeah. Everybody says, like, little boys smell bad. Not mine. No. Yeah. Not mine. I think my kids have been wearing cologne forever. Forever. Because I'm okay. like, nope, I want to smell good. So I got to give these to you first. Okay. Your so two cents? Two cents, right? Okay. So now there's a thing that you have to give them back. Okay. After you open this, then you have to give them back to me. Because there's a, I want to say superstition behind it. But go ahead and open that. There's, I'm really confused, man. Um, I know that we didn't talk about giving gifts, but I wanted to give you something. Yeah, you had me all confused. I'm... I feel a tin. There's a tin in there. I'm good at feeling things. Can I show everybody? She can be sure, if you want to. It's just a little token. Hey, Buck the Legend continues for the. That's a good spot for that. Sure. Let me show everybody here. Buck Knives. Not uh, a sponsor. Not a sponsor, but I'd love it. If All it right, were. so there's a uh, there's a legend. Do I? Oh, dude, that's those are nice. Thank you, man. I appreciate so, that. A two knife set. Um, so every man needs a knife. Like there's been, I don't know. I heard like a friend talking about how every man needs a knife, obviously because of a tool, like having a tool. No, I totally agree. Um, but those also because of what they represent. The two sets you have to give back to me though, because there's superstition. If you ever give somebody a knife, you have to give them a coin with it. So really? There's two knives in there. You they have to two. give give it back. They have to give you the money back. So now it's not necessarily a gift they bought it from you because a knife given can sever. They say sever things. Huh. They can sever a relationship. But if you give the coin in exchange back, then it's considered considered you paid for it. And therefore it's the bond is now stronger. And now that is going to be a tool that could save your, that relationship. Now I'm going to be packing a knife so, along with anything else that I'm potentially packing. Yeah. So, uh, 
Thank well, you, man. Merry I Christmas. appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I know you weren't totally expecting awesome. anything, but like, I no, just, I'm just, every, every guy in North Idaho needs to carry a knife. There was like a thing about it. that like, if you don't carry a knife, like you're less of a man or whatever, but that's, that's not necessarily true. Cause you mostly carry a gun all the time. So, um, but yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a useful, a useful thing to have. And I figured it was a, a nice gesture. I really of, appreciate it. I like the story about giving the two cents. I think it's actually a super cool, but yeah. So I, I have to ask, I mean, you, we haven't really talked about, what do you think of the new studio setup? It's awesome. We actually it? like seem like big boys now, like we're legit. Yeah, like this this love seat. This is, <coughs> it is a love seat. Um, your legs recline. You know that. The, yeah, the product over there on the side. We have, yeah, it's Patriot product over there. The mugs. Yeah, I, I think we're we're looking like big boys a little bit. Actually, kind of have a studio space. It's uh, it's neat. It's right? awesome. Yeah, it feels really good. I think personally, we got the halo light up above us too. Like, we needed a little little backlighting, but this isn't done yet. Oh wait, there's more. There, there is more happening so <laughs> you'll see what's going on it's crazy it's awesome oh, it's pretty cool let's let's talk about is it better on christmas or the day after is it better to open the presents or is it better experiencing the presents i liked the day after christmas as a kid selfishly i liked the day after christmas better okay and even as a dad i almost like it because i get to see my my son enjoying his new stuff like new, the new toys and you know or maybe he wants to like wear his new sweatshirt or whatever and and like, yeah yeah i always liked the day after because some people like the unboxing or whatever i like to see like it being put into use so like christmas you know beyond when if you take everything else out of it and it's only about presents it's great to see the anticipation kids wondering the mystery of what's in the box right yeah justin timberlake no that's not in the box. <laughs> Should I say Lonely Island? Lonely but it, was, Island it, was, yeah. it was Justin and the other guy, whatever. Yeah. But Andy the Sanders. mystery is, is what is in the box, right? And that's, that's what kids wonder about, you know, what's in the box. And, but once you open it, does it kind of fall short until you get to play with it? You know, I, I feel like times... this is a really bad Lonely Island commercial right now. <laughs> Just <laughs> the whole thing's. About I, I can't pull away from what's in the box. Like Michael Scott just sitting. Yeah, there. that's what she said. Exactly. Um, no, like, no, but I, I, that that point is is pointing because like sometimes like we we do gift giving and like you watch your kids open their presents and they want to just run off into the corner and start playing with that thing immediately. Mm -hmm. and you're like, no, 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 wait, you've got more. So we're like, man, sometimes I'm like, who cares? Like, let's make it an all day thing. Like, yeah, play with it as much as you want, and then you can open the next one, and when you're done. Like I think it's actually really smart. Why not? Yeah. You gotta like spread it out more. Don't like yeah, absolutely. Although you can be that dad that's sitting on the side, like, oh, make sure the wrapping paper gets in the bag. Like you gotta <laughs> it's um okay. Are, are you that dad? Because I, maybe... I may have turned into that dad like last year. But... Dude, there's such a mess. And I'm like, just throw it in my direction and I'll put it in the bag from that point. Yeah. Or you if know, you like, like a gift bag, you can throw in the gift bag and then I'll pick yeah. it out of there and then save the bag. And it's all I good, save, but like I it's save gift bags too, by the way. I had like a couple and then I, I don't know. I, I just forget to reuse them because they go off in the closet and I'm like, Oh, I've got 90,000 of these things. Grandparent that would save like every shred of wrapping. They, they try to make you unwrap it as careful they as had, possible to reuse it. They had to pull out their new knife to cut the tape perfectly. Just yep. They could use their buck knife to open it up. Made in North Idaho. They, they turn into doctors or scalpel. <laughs> That's really how it feels. All right. All right. Let me open it. <laughs> Here you go. Well, now open it the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. No. Um, <clears throat> But, you know, if you're not going to, if you're going to try to shoehorn all the presents into like a one hour block, and it yeah. depends on what the kids are doing too, obviously. Once you get older, I think you kind of just get it out of the way. Like you open as, I don't know, so as you get older, I open presents later and later every, every year. It gets to the point where you're like, the presents, the last thing you're going to do, you just want to hang out and oh, enjoy it. Drink coffee. Spend the time. Yeah. Have a couple of cinnamon rolls because that's a tradition. Dude, I'm too. so excited for your cinnamon rolls. For you to enjoy oh, your cinnamon yes. rolls. That's what I meant to say. Mom, if you're listening. Yeah. Please, I forgot to I make that request. I haven't. Dude, I haven't had a good cinnamon roll in a long time. Oh, I know. I love a good cinnamon really roll. Really long time. Tara Bakery makes really good ones. The coffee place. Oh, yeah. That was a good place. Really good cinnamon rolls. So, so I've, I've like lost. Off tangent, that's right. I've lost nine pounds, right? Yeah. Because I've been. I figured, you know, I know all this stuff and I might as well finally start, you know, cutting up a little bit. And sure. it's. You always make that decision around the holidays, which is the worst time ever. But I've been so good that on Christmas, I'm not going to worry about it. 
you know, I'm not going to go crazy See because kid. yeah, well, I'm not going to go crazy because I don't plan on eating a ton, but I'm going to enjoy the things I normally enjoy because the reality is like life is too short to focus solely on, Hey, weight loss and looking physical or whatever. Right. It yeah. just, it doesn't work out as well. So I, I really just want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing and continuing because my goal is hit 225. I'm at 241. Dude, in the past I, <laughs> eight, eight to 10 years, I've never dropped below 250. So, and I know I, I, I don't look at a whole lot, but yeah, I want to go 225. That's a good goal. That's, uh, that's, that's what I'm hoping. I'll join you. <laughs> I got further to go, but I'll join you. I'll try. <laughs> It's it's also, it's been interesting, dude. Wrestling diet. Yeah. Um, I'm but, trying to do it the right way though, because I don't lose any muscle mass. Yeah. So when I hit back at the gym, I want to make sure I'm doing everything right. Because I'm going every once in a while, just not a ton. Um, because I was sick, obviously, and you know, life happens. So yeah, it's been hard to go back since COVID too. Like I finally have my lungs back. I mean, it took two months to finally like, dude. When when I had it, oh my gosh, it took me forever to go back. Like I get on the, the like elliptical, and I felt like I was gonna have a heart attack. Yeah, it's it's flipping awful. It is it is awful. Yeah, so it's been a long haul. Now that I'm finally there, now it's going to be annoying because New Year's hits and then everybody's back at the gym. You're just like rolling your eyes, like waiting for about mid-February. Watching all like the weirdos words. and they're like, do weird head workouts with a freaking <laughs> leg machine. And you're like, what the hell is going on in here? Turning the yeah the inner thigh workout into like an arm workout. You know what screws me up? So <laughs> you, you've got all these people that they're, they're, they're like trying to work on their freaking like... It's like a... Adductor. <laughs> I honestly okay. Legitimately though, that machine could totally be worked for arm wrestling. It could. Yeah. Because you're yeah, I mean the rotation's right if you it would it would make sense. I could see yeah. that. Okay. It's weird to me when people go to the gym and go, I don't know what to do. And you're like, there's a million YouTube videos out there. A there million. Is. Some great ones, too. Right? And then you've got every machine has a picture or a diagram. And you're like, yep. how is this a challenge? And then you know, the other one too is like, just pick a program. Like there yeah. are how many hundreds of free, like, free 45 minute, 45 minute weightlifting exercises. You don't have to do 90 minutes of, oh, of you, hard weights. You should never, if, if your workouts take more than an hour, you're probably wasting your time anyway. Yeah. And that's really it. Unless you're the guy, it's like, unless you're like really, you know, doing five by fives, because then you would take your time. Take a break. You got to research you're doing like every full time. ISO exercises to where you're only you're trying to isolate muscle groups as much as possible. I can see that. But I mean, on time. average, though, most most normal <laughs> people in the gym aren't at that level. I mean, unless you're a bodybuilder, unless you're really going, look, I need to focus on buys. Yeah. Or focus on tries. You should never do. I'm going to work my body gris- parts. Just place. my gracilis muscle today. Yeah. You should never do a body <laughs> parts. Place. You should always do full body workouts every time unless you're focusing on like stage stuff. Yeah. Then there's a totally different story. It's right? a conversation that we can have with Shane. Later yeah. On. And if you're looking for, <laughs> but if you're looking for free, I know Shane's trainer. Yeah. But if you're looking for free, um, I would shout him out. Mind Pump, my favorite group, mindpumpmedia.com forward slash free, I think is what it is. Has a million different free exercises. Free. Yeah. Talking three, three trainers that are amazing. Get on it. There's a right? bunch of stuff out there that you, you can find some really great stuff. There is. I mean, as many yoga exercises that there are, there are free weight exercises. How many, like how many yoga TV channels are there? I, just a, I know but there's like a million channels right so just i don't know man there's no excuse to not be able to get in there get your workout and get it done and know what you're doing yeah i mean i give myself an hour and if you if i, and I can get a good sweat a good hard workout in yeah. in an hour and you should i mean and if you, you just keep cardio pushing. like hour 20 tops if you enjoy cardio if you I hate cardio. Ah, if you enjoy i hate cardio. it's, it's, it's not my thing so I hate cardio dude we were talking about i like a rope sweep though Ropes fun. Heavy ropes. Oh, the heavy rope. It's weird how fast you get drained. You're like, oh my gosh, I did four. Eight minutes. You know, like eight it's minutes. So I'm stupid. done. I'm yeah. done in eight minutes. Yeah. We Go were ahead. talking about giving the wrong Christmas gift. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. <laughs> and honestly, for me myself, I can't think of any time I've been like, you know, I've given the wrong gift per se. I assume some people probably took it, it was like, oh, I'm gonna return this crap, you know, like whatever. But you gave the ultimate example and I flip and love this. So mm, what do you got? What's going on? Don't get engaged on Christmas. <laughs> so your gift was a ring. I didn't give any gifts that year too. So she was already mad at me. Oh, oh. Because she's like, thought I snubbed her. Right. And yeah. I waited a solid hour mm. after giving gifts. Want to make her sweat. <laughs> 
And uh, yeah. So you set it up I wrong in the first place. Yeah, and I proposed on Christmas, which was, I don't recommend. You I pulled like, like the worst rom com experience oh, ever. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> and, you know, I, I won't do it again. Um, did it? Nobody told me otherwise. I don't know. Like, so I can, it didn't turn out the way you expected, I assume. No. Okay. This wasn't the wife. It was before that. It's my ex. This is your ex? Yeah. So she said yes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. She said yes. Just... Was she still pissed about no other no. presents? No. <laughs> Cut over it pretty quickly. Okay. But yeah, I just it, I, let Christmas be Christmas. If you're going to do something important, make it like let that be, day be special in its own right. I and so I totally agree with that statement 100% because I feel like Bonehead Me didn't really put two and two together. I thought it I mean, was like easy to kind of in the movies, it's romantic. Yeah. It yeah, totally seems like, oh, it's great. Kind of stupid. Everybody's going to be there. It's <laughs> going to be a good time. I'm going to share it with everybody. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And it, I think it kind of fizzles out because it's like the day itself is what makes it great. Yep. You know, so you have to use a different day and not a holiday. Yeah. It loses. And it's like Valentine's Day too. I think that's just campy too. But like. You should never get married on a holiday either. No. Unless you're awful with dates. Or then you get, get married yeah. and never, and if you live in North Idaho, never get married in the first three weeks of October. That will be hunting season mm -hmm. and you will take off every elk hunter that is a family member or friend and your presence will likely suck too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do it after that. And that way you get all the free meat you want. That's right. That's right. You get like elk sausage for You'll get a grinder. You're going to get some, <laughs> some nice knives. Probably. Might get a gun out of it. Who knows? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> I killed it with this, you know? Like, that's... <laughs> No, I mean, um, I say that jokingly, but, you know, it's, I, I actually think October is a pretty normal time for weddings, isn't it? I know a lot of people that do yeah, that really, in the fall. Yeah. September. It's not so hot. I think my first marriage was in October-ish. No, it wasn't. There was no snow. I'm really bad with dates and times. I honestly, I couldn't tell you. Oh, um, okay. No, really, really bad. Actually, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's tragic. Yeah, that it was, is tragic. So yes, if I give you one word of advice in this episode, you take anything from it. Don't propose on Christmas. Never. Um, it's bad. Yeah, that sets yourself up for a lot of pressure. That it's supposed to be like the movies, and it's usually not. Yeah. Um, Dude, let's talk about pressure. Let's unpack that for a second here. We should open with under pressure. It's a great song. That is a that is a great song um yeah so like go ahead it's christmas time we are single fathers um and most single fathers get limited time with their kids around the holidays right even though they want to is there more pressure on dads to provide and provide extra during the holidays for our kids what do you think i think so yeah i mean I think it's because there's the inherent, and I, it sounds terrible, because um, I know some people feel like it's a competition. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. Between the other parent, yep. Who can give the better gifts? Who can give more gifts? Who can do whatever? I don't care, honestly. Like, I'm about doing Christmas. Like, my my son is gonna get, and it's not. Sometimes I don't give him what he asks for. Sometimes it's totally ridiculous and out of the question. Like this year, he's like, I want a miniature golf course and a huge playground in the backyard. I'm like, yeah, that ain't happening. Like, <laughs> not building you a golf course. In the backyard, I love his epic wish, dude. It's I, awesome. I think it's it would fantastic. be great. Like, I but I would be more like, like, hey, this spring, let's build a. If you want, to, let's build a couple holes. Yeah. Like, I'll get the heavy roller. Like, we can flatten out some area of the yard. Like, plant some really good like fescue and like. Let's make our own putting green if you want. Like, that'd be cool. I would actually be down with that. But that'd be, point, yeah, I, I, that'd be super cool. It'd be super rad. Rad. It'd cool. be awesome. Yeah. Um, in the same token, it's like, dude, to just like wish it for Christmas and you walk outside and instead of a playground and putting green in your backyard, you've got a foot of snow. Congratulations. Like, oh, I didn't get my Christmas wish. Like, well, it's kind of not logical to have that. Like, it's not really fair yeah, to ask true. for that around Christmas time. But, uh, in my opinion, that was it. But like, there's other stuff he's wanted for a long time that 
Like I want to be more thoughtful with what I get in. Um, I think a lot of yeah. people aren't super thoughtful about what they get. It's all about quantity a lot of times. And I mean, like, so when I decided a long time ago, and we've talked about this past that, you know, I realized that after three presents, kids just are checked out. Yep. They're, they're, there's just too much crap. They're like, oh my gosh, what what's left, you know? And they always focus in on three kids. Typically it's about three of them, you know? Um, and so I was like, I'm going to make it memorable. I want to do a minimum of three. I, I set my limit on how much I'm going to spend every single time. Um, this year, I mean, the boys got, Dylan got two different things so far. I'm really, yes, I said so far. I'm really bad at Christmas. I can't do uh, presents, dude. I'm if I have it, for, I, I'm like, ah, oh, you still have shopping to have it. for two people. So, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I get it. But it was, it was like Dylan really, really wanted this amazing thing. And he was like, Dad, can, can we do this? And I was like, you know what? <coughs> Instead of you buying it for yourself, Merry Christmas. That's yours now. Sweet. And, and it was over the normal Christmas budget, but I was like, that, that's, that's your gift. There you go. And he was like, yeah, that's really what I want. So we, we did it. My son, Christian, um, he wanted something. So we did that already. So like Christmas day is literally just us hanging out, dude, enjoying some treats or whatever, drinking hot cocoa or coffee, watching Christmas movies, enjoying our time. Cause that's what I we care it. about. Like this year, Christmas is kind of weird, obviously. Like my family's not coming up yet. And yep. then you know, I pick up Owen at night, Christmas night. So like literally I'd be alone all day. And which I'm okay with. Like it's, I mean, it's supposed to snow a ton. I'm oh, okay. It? Yeah, it's supposed to snow a lot either I tonight no or tomorrow. Okay. And so I'm like, man, I mean, if we get like four to five inches of snow, like I'm okay helping people out. Like if they've got, especially if they got family coming over. Yeah. Like it'd be kind of cool to wake up Christmas morning and you know your kids are coming and all of a sudden your driveway is like snow blow or plowed or whatever. That'd be really sweet, actually. Yeah. I mean, I, actually, if man. you're an older person that can't do it yourself, like that'd be kind of an awesome gift. So I know, if, you know, about 10 or 11 people that I've been helping out over the course of the winter, they're like, I plan on like Christmas morning, just going out and like taking care of it. Um, especially if I have the means to do it. Like it's, I don't mind. Cause it's like, okay, let me, let me bless you. Like, let me have that. Well, we all know it feels better to give. Oh, absolutely. It feels so much better to give. And if I'm not going to be getting anything Christmas morning and that's okay. It doesn't mean I'm not going to get anything at all. It just means that like family's going to come to town. And, and so like, yeah. you know, Owen comes back and we'll have Christmas, you know, we'll do a couple gifts and you know, my parents are going to bring some gifts and, and other people are gonna have gifts for him too, and so it's like you know, like, so he's gonna he's gonna have plenty anyway. And his birthday is like within a week and a half too, so it's just like Holy he's gonna geez. literally be opening presents for probably like six days straight, um, which is fine. Like, happy Hanukkah, <laughs> seriously, <yeah. laughs> right? Like, you can't really something. complain too much, but yeah, but like for gifts for him, and like, I mean, I don't want to spoil it. Like, I mean, he's really into like Super Mario stuff, which has been really cool because like, yeah. as a kid, I really loved it too. So like, we've been able to share some of that stuff like at some point i have that nintendo mm -hmm. sitting in my garage someday i'll give it to him dude that's gonna be awesome oh yeah it's and it's unopened and everything too in the original nes in package unopened and so, so it's gonna be worth effing crazy it's worth a ton of money but it's like at some point like then it's gonna be his and he can deem what he wants to do with it yeah and but i got him like this really cool like lego mario lego set like a mario and a luigi one so Freaking like cool, two, dude! Two different levels, and they can like talk to each other. Heck yeah! Yeah, so Heck it's yeah. Super, super cool. Um, and then like I got him like a really cool sled and like some new shoes. He loves jokes, so I got him a book of jokes. Mm -hmm. And are they like super corny jokes? Oh yeah, that's good. That's the best. That is so the best. he's gonna sit back there and read them. And they're the funniest thing on the planet. You're gonna get so annoyed. Oh, it's, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be so worth it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, some like coloring books and stuff like that too. I mean, so like he's. You know, on my end, and then like for his birthday, because it's in a week and a half, it's like, you know, swimming lessons. Nice. That's perfect. Like, I want to be thoughtful, kind of. And it's kind of weird. Last year, I, I went bigger for his birthday than for Christmas. And, like, this year, I'm going bigger for Christmas than his birthday. Mm -hmm. He's going to be spending his birthday with his mom, too. So, um, just the way the schedule works out. So, I dig it, dude. I think yeah. it's really cool. I think it's actually super cool. <clears throat> and then, like, you know, other people, you know, get a little bit of a little bit of you you've got all these people showing up and all this stuff going on and it's like i mean that means that you're not spread too thin and a lot of dads spend too much money yeah. and invest too much over the holidays and we really <coughs> dude so, i mean these parents going into debt over this craziness yeah and i didn't it's, i don't it's I don't christmas use it's, cards, so yeah like, yeah it's, it's crazy to me man it's totally crazy I, I applaud people that budget for christmas so they can be generous like i love that idea um because that's thoughtful in its own right so, I just think I, I like the whole change up 
you know, how you and I think about Christmas now, we just, it's, it's family time. It's not yeah. about the, all this, this crazy, um, all this crazy spending. It doesn't make any sense. No, the crazy spending is one thing if like you, but if you budget to go over the top because you just want to be generous. That's cool. I love that idea. Yeah. Like you, if you can afford it more power to yeah, you. You go fit it, it into like how you are throughout the year. And like, if you are more frugal so you can give to other people, that's awesome. Like that's a crazy, awesome idea. That's yeah. totally in my brain. Like I'm like, don't waste your money on me. Like that's, but at the same time, like <laughs> they want to do that. I can't take that from them. If, if they get joy in giving gifts and that's their love language, like that's okay. hundred percent. And that's really what it is too. Yeah. Dude. But, so yeah, there is a lot of pressure on dads, obviously to, to provide during this time. And it's and like hard super feeling overwhelmed. Also some dads just don't have the means and that's really hard too. So like, what do you do if you can't give a lot? And I've been in that position too. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's like, if you can't give a lot, you do a lot of small things. The, the coolest gift, it seemed like a cop out to some, maybe, I don't know. Some people thought it was a pretty cool idea. I gave a book of coupons and it was experiences. So like the year that I was struggling, I had to drop $20,000 within oh, six months leading up to Christmas on my attorney fees and everything. Yep. So like I gave a coupon book. It was like over the course of the year, like you get 10 coupons for going and getting frozen yogurt. You get a free day out of school. No questions asked. You can just say the day. My dad's going to take that day off from work if it's not already pre-planned or something important that day. Mm-hmm. <coughs> we have the dry cough people. Yeah. No, I have a sinus infection. So if you I hear do. me sound like I've got like water in my head, that's pretty much what I feel like right now. Um, <laughs> but, and so it's just like drainage. Kind of I hate out. that. Yeah. I'm on the back end of it, which is good. But um, no, it's so like the experience book was awesome because like there was a camping trip, there was fishing trips. Uh, I had the Oregon coast thing that was in there. And it was cool because I gave that the year before COVID. Like oh, nice. the Christmas, so it was Christmas of 2018. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we didn't spend it in 2019, and then COVID hit. That was when we were planning on going, and he go, he's like, Dad, I want to do this, and he handed me that coupon from Oregon Coast, and I'm like, dude, it's so cool that he kept it that long, though. Oh, he still has that's, some of them. That's really he's awesome. still sitting on some of them. They're in his, like, in his drawer next to his bed. Awesome. And he's just like, hey, Dad, frozen yogurt. I'm like, all right, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so, like, I mean, but it's cool because he gets to spend it like money. So yeah. he gets to do with it as he wants. And like when he wants to have an experience and then there's stuff that like we've done, that's probably in that booklet that he hasn't had to use the coupon for anyways. Yeah. But that's really, it's like, it's really neat, dude. It was a pretty cool gift. I thought it was, he thought it was like, what's this. And then until he started to realize like after like the first, like three trips to get frozen, ice frozen yogurt in the, in the first week, I couldn't say no. Cause he's like, I want to do that. I'm like, all right, we're going again, I guess. But yeah, it was uh Dude, I haven't had frozen yogurt in front of me. I need some candy. Dude, it's, yeah, it's like Oreos. Some and cheddar cheese. Oreos and hot fudge. and That's so cool. Yeah. No, sorry. But anyways. No, so it was, that was like, I mean, so if you're like trying to think of gift ideas and, and funds are tight. <coughs> that's a great way to do it. It's a, a good experience. Yeah. It's a really good experience. I'm going to get a drink of water. something. I'm Come on. My water. Yeah. <laughs> We're just, right here. It is right there. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah, man. No, I mean, like, so it's it's tough though, but other fathers out there, man, don't feel, <clears throat> don't put yourself in a corner and feel overwhelmed with everything that's going on. Kids don't care. They want our time more than anything. If yeah. you spent the entire day devoting yourself to that child, what do you want for breakfast? Dude, what do you for dinner? What do you, let's go out and let's grab some, some ice cream or some frozen yogurt, whatever. Right. That's really what's making everything matter the most for your children. And it's freaking amazing because they will, they will love it. They love all of it. I mean, they'll feed off of it. Like, Hey, let's go get waffles. Let's go, you know, breakfast for dinner. Like, I mean, just let them choose. And sometimes that's the experience, you know, like, so you can go above and beyond for your kids, but I mean, sometimes you look at it as like, is it possible to invest like too much time or too much money into your kids? Yeah. And you can go a lot of different directions that I believe it is possible to spend too much time. Uh, 100% man. But it's got to be in the right direction, right? Especially when it comes to sports. I mean, I coached and I've been around people that coached and for a long time and, and as an athlete too, and how many kids I've seen in parents, that's where they just turn into psychopaths is usually related to sports or something of like that, or certain activities. Like you get like, you know, we always joke is like band was big at our school. Sometimes band parents were more psychotic than the sports parents. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
And so it was like, oh, I'm sending my kid to this clinic or this band camp or this whatever, you know, or like, you know, athletes and wrestlers, especially. It's like, I'm sending my kid, you know, he's he's a seventh grade. I'm going to send him to the Jay Robinson camp. If, you're in, if you know wrestling and you hear Jay Robinson, it's like basically you're sending your kid to boot camp. That's crazy. As a seventh grader. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I mean, there is because all it's going to do is lead to burnout. And, and too much mm-hmm. of a good thing is not a good thing. Oh, nope. and so, you know, I like to. Too many people don't realize that. Yeah, that's that's part of the issue. And and you know, you miss the value of like instilling values into your kid. Sometimes, like if you're gonna invest in too much money, you could give the opportunity to your kid to earn some money to spend on themselves or to spend mm-hmm. on some, and you know, let them choose what to do with it. And sometimes you'll be surprised on what they choose. They'd rather spend it on somebody else than themselves. So that reminds me of the Halloween dude when the, the kid came to the door and I had the full size candy bars and he was like, he was like, Oh yeah, sweet. And I was like, dude, you want another? Cause he was really polite. And he was like, well, yeah. And so he grabbed the, um, one of the, like the Hershey's bar, you know? Uh-huh. And then he was like, no, wait, wait, wait. And he was like, I want to go for my dad. And I was like, Oh buddy, yeah. you take one for your dad and the other one you wanted to <laughs> you get an make extra, it happen. Extra one too. No, it's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah. What happens when you let your kids do what makes them feel good and that's giving it's really cool and sometimes as a dad you know think about that and flip that on ourselves but it feels good to give to our kids right yep but when you give too much it burns you out yeah and and i'm not saying don't give a lot to your kids like i'm not that's give what not, you can you can clearly yeah because you can burn yourself out like you can run yourself ragged into the ground i mean i remember there was a point in time where initially in the first probably year um, after after divorce and everything my mom looks and she's like what's your schedule like after after Owen goes to bed I was like I don't know she's like what's a great going, question what time are you going to sleep I was like midnight she's like why and I'm like well I've got to clean house I got to pick up all the toys I got to do the laundry got to do all the dishes got to put the dishes away you know yeah. so it's like you start dishes right after dinner so by the time you, the cycle runs, like my dishwasher runs a little long, mm-hmm. um, but this, it's super quiet and clean, but like I'll have to put dishes away. It'll be like three hours. So I had three hours to get everything done. So like, I kind of like would sweep the house, go through get everything done. Maybe the kid wakes up. You have to put him back to bed. Yep. That type of thing. And then like you take care of your stuff and shower and everything. And then you get ready for bed. And by that time, it's like almost midnight. Yeah, that's, that's a long freaking day. <coughs> Holy crap. That's a long day. Yeah. And then I'm up again in the morning. Like my kid's an early riser. So, so it's like, well, what times do you wake up in the morning? Like, How'd you fix it? I stopped giving a crap so much about having the <laughs> house be perfect all the time. I really did. It sounds bad. It's true but, though. Yeah. I mean, it's there's, totally certain, true. there's certain things I save it for the weekend. Like laundry That's... doesn't have to be done every single day. If you have enough clothes, like that sounds really lazy, but at the same time, no, dude, well, it's not like as a, it, sometimes you just got to go to survival mode. And do what needs to be done. That's like an absolute. The question though is that, I mean, <clears throat> laundry should only take one day a week. Yeah. Because really, if you've already got all the laundry done, how many pairs of clothes are you wearing? I mean, Toddlers to, to are need more than one yeah. day, right? And granted, once, you know, the nanny entered the picture and everything, and I was able to afford that. And, you know, she was amazing. You know, it helped. The laundry situation was immediately remedied because she was doing that during the day. That makes sense. And which was an insane. And then she was cleaning the kitchen as the day went to and like picking up the toys as the day went. So when I would get off work and get home, really, it was just dishes. I mean, it was like all I really had dishes and maybe clean. Like, and that was okay. a, so then I was starting to get to bed around like 10. And I was like, mm. oh, thank God. Like, I was able to breathe a little bit. Um, but then the cycle starts over again. When you know, for me, I just, I just stayed super, super active. I mean, like when my kids were making messes. <laughs> When they're done cleaning it up, I clean it up with them. I'd make sure it was it was part of the thing. No, it's a bed. Yeah. It is what it is, right? So, yeah. but my boys, I'd make them clean up, and I'd pick it up with them at the same time. I would always show them the right example. Yeah. Um, for laundry, I mean, laundry it literally is you set it and you walk away. Yep. So I had tons of time with laundry. I was going to do whatever else. Holding clothes, the part I hate. I hate folding. For me, dude, it it was bring the kids into the laundry room with me, and as I pull them out, I fold them. So it's literally just taking them and placing them when I'm done. I, I just got super efficient with what I had to do. So I wanted to make sure everything was done just right. And that's what I cared about. Yeah. 
I mean, too, it was like, you know, I'd make meals and, and cook dinner and everything, too. And, yeah, you know, it was like, it's a lot. I mean, like, and then I'd go to the gym, you know, and, like, luckily the gym I had had child care. So, like. That's super cool, too. It was nice because he could get some activity and get his energy up and I could get my workout in. And that was your break also. That yeah. was your stress relief. That was. I mean, that's a big piece. We have to know when to, to go, <laughs> look, I need to take a minute. I need to relax a little bit. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it either. You know, and when you get weekends and stuff and it's and then you're the child care too, but it sounds like, I mean, that sounds bad as a parent. It's like, I'm child care. No, I'm dad. But there is the care of your child that's involved yep. with being dad um, and finding activities and things to do. And, you know, it's just, it gets to be overwhelming and daunting. And I think his dad's like, you know, sometimes we're the last ones to ever ask to seek help or admit that like we're overwhelmed. I totally agree, man. And you know, why is that? Like, why, why are we so stubborn? And maybe that is what it is. is Because we're we're stubborn stubborn. (laughs) and we just don't like to ask for help. It's the same thing about like asking for directions or, you know, like, I don't know. And I think that's where I finally like got to the point where I'm like, screw it. You know what? How many times have people said like, if you ever need help or like, Hey, if you ever want me to watch him, like just ask. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. all right, how about next week? Yeah. You're like, I'm going to jump on that. Jump on it. Like right away. If you ever need me to watch him, just ask. I'm like, all right, Hey, can you uh, hang out with Owen for like an hour and a half so I can go grocery shopping without a tantrum? Yeah. <laughs> like, and I can buy whatever I feel like without having people, <laughs> young things screaming at me the entire time. <laughs> no bones. Oh, 100%. Them to the oh, store. Dude, yeah. <laughs> so I have to worry about him laying underneath the cart, getting his fingers caught in the wheels. Yeah. Or like trying to grab something as the cart goes by and then taking the next 10 items oh, with yeah, it. Yeah, dude, totally. <laughs> so that's fun of parenting. I mean, that's, that's the, the older it gets, the more you kind of like, cherish those memories of all the stupid and all the bad and it just it all it just keeps getting better and better you know the hard, the thing about like the overwhelmed part that i think it's overlooked is that you know that is what leads to depression that's what leads to yeah. anxiety and you know overwhelming we just think of like oh we're just really stressed out and we just kind of oversimplify it but mm-hmm. if we let that build and build and build and we never seek help for it and, and sometimes like being overwhelmed, like it needs to, you need to go to counseling. Sometimes you just need to like sit down with the professionals, like try to get your life in order of importance. Yep. And we like, cause if, you know, like I went through counseling one point, like, you know, biblical counseling was like, is it a two or a 10? You know, if it's a two, you no, know, it's really not that bad. If it's a 10, that's an immediate emergency it needs to be addressed right away. In theory, that sounds like a great idea, but if you get, five twos guess what it adds up to yeah you gotta i mean you're just stacking it adds up to 10 right and so like you have to be able to like prioritize time or prioritize energy or thoughts or i mean break your life down in like all of these columns and like literally just live your life in that way sometimes just to survive it so if like you're a single dad and you're like going through this or single parent you're like man it just seems so overwhelming just call time out for a second take 15 minutes get out a piece of paper and just write down what it is that you really are worrying about. And then it's like, okay, is it a thought or is it actually happening? It's like separated into like, is it a, is a hypothetical situation or is it an actual situation? Then it is, can I do this? Can I ask for help to do this? And then you kind of break it down that way. You look at big picture and you're like, okay, I can do this. Well, I think part of it also is that we spend too much time stressing about things we can't control. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like it's been my philosophy in life is like, if I can't control it, why am I even focusing on it? Because nothing I can do is going to fix it. Right. It's not going to make it any paralysis any... by analysis. Yeah. yeah. And that's really, and so I'm like, no, I, we, we have to give up and go, no, push that aside and go, this is what I can control. And that's what I will control. Yeah. And that's right. It's my fault. I'm just all wiggly over here. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> you can't sit still. So, you know, how can you help when you feel overwhelmed? I mean, how can you get help? Uh, you know, sometimes it's asking that community around you, you know, like, yeah, just and communities, people you love, people that are in your circle to go, look, do you mind? Yeah. Can you watch my kids for a minute? I mean, I, I mean, dude, there were times when, when I reached out to Lingam Monica and I was like, Hey guys, can you, I know we're hanging out. Can you watch kids while I go do whatever? Yeah. Yeah. They were cool with it. Cause well, it's like Brittany, I mean, she's been a huge help. Oh yeah. Forever. Right. With, with Owen for a while. And it's like, you know, sometimes it's like allowing me to either do side gigs or it's Mm -hmm. like sometimes it's work related or sometimes it's just having a social life and there's an activity that may not be kid friendly like whatever it's been in the past like you know having those that tight group of people around you that you trust your kids with is huge if you don't have that i mean 
create for, it create it pay for a sitter <laughs> yeah. too i mean create it yeah if you need a network of sitters like reach out to us because i know that we know plenty yeah. of teenagers too that are good solid kids but um you know it's it being willing to put yourself out there at risk that, like oh i can let somebody love my kid yeah and and it's okay and that's for okay me to like it's totally away. okay yeah did i was babysat as a kid i remember having sitters mm -hmm. like it's been going on for generations it's been a thing I don't know why people now all of a sudden in the 2020s are like, oh, no, I mean, I just won't go. Like they're, they're too worried about people touching their kids. Yeah. And I get that. That's a that's a fair, you know, thing to be afraid of. But I mean, that's that's why I mean, you used to vet your, your babysitters back in the day that I was how many parents did they sit for? You talk to those parents to make sure it was all good. You know, yeah. like you, you vetted that. Yeah, all that stuff are important. That's what matters. But. We don't want to talk about kid touching over Christmas, though. No, no. We're sitting on and, Santa's and lap. And so, like, you know, we look at it, it's like when you're ready to ask for help, like maybe it's professionally going to a counselor. Maybe it's yeah. in clergy, like your faith comes in the picture and you should be asking your pastor, you're reaching into your faith aspect of it, too. And then like going, you know, if you're a believer, going to God with it and saying like, hey, I need I'm overwhelmed here. I need some of this taken off my plate. It's going to your family, your friends, your community around you that we've talked about, like all these people you know, that love you. There's people out there that genuinely care. And sometimes like, I hate it. You know, like people think they go to social media and it's, you, you think that you're airing your dirty laundry about being a single parent. Sometimes you just got to ask for flipping help. If you yeah. got people on social media, they might care about you too. And like, or they know a connection like, Hey, you know, this gym, this night next week is doing a free childcare for parents. If they want to get out, like I know gyms do it all the time. That's and super cool. It's super cool. To, and they're all vetted. Like they're all, you know, mm -hmm. or maybe it's like, Hey, five, 10 bucks, you get four hours of free childcare. Yeah. Like take it not free childcare, but $10 for childcare. Like that, that's the rate you can't beat. Mm -hmm. So take yeah. those opportunities when they come. But Man, I think, um, <coughs> sorry, that's okay. This is our Christmas episode. So, you know, Merry Christmas, everybody. And yeah. thanks for uh, hanging out with us for our ongoing advocacy message <laughs> yeah i actually been talking and you know kind of going through like past episodes and stuff like going back to the roots yeah our early beginnings and how the conversation has melded into what it is now and it continues to be like there's parts of our story that aren't written yet and so you know we talked about why we started this is because everybody has a story right we each had a story we wanted to put this out there and you know that changes over time and yeah. it grows and it, it, you know, goes through ebbs and flows. And, you know, so like, I'm glad that we're still doing this because we can still keep pushing that message forward and, you know, not lose sight of where we've been and where we're headed, like where we're going to, we still don't know. We know, still have more stories to tell too, which is great. Yeah. And we still learn along the way too. Like we're the first ones to admit that like, yeah, I guess what I figured out last week and I can't do, you know, and, <laughs> and what, how not to raise your child. Yeah. But, you know, um, look at my screw up, learn from it. Yeah, seriously. So, you know, in, in the, in the raising our kids thing and the aspect of that, but we're also raising ourselves and, you know, as parents and growing and learning and we get, the good thing is like, as a parent, you get to choose the community around you and who you bring in. <laughs> so choose your village correctly. Yeah, I think I'm I've got the off the rails. Up. Yeah, man. But yeah, so I'm I'm thankful and it's her man. Let's <laughs> end it right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're awesome. We're good though. But, um, but no, I know what you're yeah. saying, man. And it really is. It's it's great to be able to do this and and help people <laughs> out. And I mean, like I said, give us a follow, give us a like, subscribe, please. Um, get us out there. Help yeah. us. Help us reach more people. Let us. If you know somebody's a great story, tell us about it. Let us talk about it. Let us talk to them. I think it'd be a fantastic piece for us. Yeah, we get to bring in Zoom in the picture now and being on video and everything too. Um, it totally changes how we approach this. So clearly we're not supermodels. No. no I, like I was joking. We're just Joes. We're just regular dudes Thanks here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we do. Um, but just take a chance. If you got a story, somebody you know has a story, get them in contact with us and, and let's get that out there and get that message. Um, sometimes it just starts us bringing somebody on. I mean, that's how we started with, you know, Shane kind of reaching out and yep. I said, hey, to share your story. And then next thing you know, here we are hosting a podcast. We're in our second season. Yeah, we're, we're in year two, <laughs> which is fantastic. So, yeah. you know, thank you so much. So for, for today. Yeah, I'm Ryan. I'm Tristan. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> See you next time.